Welcome back to Cardenades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video we're going to be looking at what is moral status. Now, most people think that it is immoral to destroy or kill a person, but it is not immoral to just destroy a piece of plastic you found on the ground. Normative theories of ethics are theories which tell us which actions are good and which actions are bad. Theories of moral status tell us what kind of things those rules about action apply to. While there is general consensus on humans having moral status or moral standing and plastic not having moral status, there is less consensus on things like fetuses, animals, plants, computers, landmarks, ecosystems, and more. And when now when discussing moral standing or moral status, a distinction is made between derivative moral standing and true moral standing. Your friend Chidi might be said to have true moral standing since we would consider harm done to him wrong in its own right. Chidi's hand-annotated copy of Kant's Critique of Pure Reason, on the other hand, would probably not be considered to itself have moral standing, but it might be considered to have derivative moral standing. It has moral standing in virtue of the fact that Chidi cares about it, and he would be harmed if you destroyed it. So, something having derivative moral standing means that it has moral standing in virtue of something with moral standing being harmed if you harmed that thing. But if those things that cared about it or those things that gave it that derivative moral standing didn't exist, it would have no moral standing on its own. Now, most people would probably grant animals at least derivative moral status. In other words, it's wrong to hurt Jessica's dog because Jessica cares about it. However, there is greater debate around whether the dog deserves true moral status. Would it be wrong to hurt the dog even if no one cared about it? Or to put it another way, is it wrong to hurt or kill animals for food if no one cares about them? And there's a range of ways to explain our intuitions on this subject. Some philosophers grant the dog full moral status, equivalent to a human, and would say anything that it's wrong to do to a human, it's wrong to do to a dog. Others create another category of partial moral status, or might have a kind of gradient of moral status, depending on other factors, for things maybe that can feel pain but don't have higher cognitive functions. Maybe I don't have to respect my dog's right to freedom, but I can't torture it. However, exactly where those lines get drawn is a little iffy. If I can slaughter animals humanely, does that mean I can still eat them because they don't end up feeling pain? And still others flat out deny any moral status to anything that is not human. Now that might seem a little restrictive and discriminatory, but there are some problems that arise from giving moral status to things that aren't human. Let's take a look. It might seem easy to ascribe partial or full moral status to animals. The question is going to remain, in virtue of what are they granted such moral status? If it is in virtue of their nerves being able to sense pain, we seem committed to giving nerve tissue grown in a lab moral status. If it is in virtue of them having some kind of consciousness or the experience of pain, it's not only unclear that animals are actually conscious, let alone other humans being conscious, but it seems like if we're not sure that other humans are conscious, we certainly can't be sure that animals are conscious. And let alone other things like artificial intelligence or machines, which are generally considered not to have moral status, but seem to be able to do things that a lot of animals can't. If a dolphin doesn't need to pass the Turing test to be considered having moral status, why should a machine? So when we're ascribing consciousness to animals, it seems like we're holding them to a much lower bar than we would hold a machine to. And so 
why are we allowed to do that? Is it just a bias towards organic matter over inorganic matter? There's some interesting questions in philosophy of mind here that come in very importantly when we're talking about what we can really ascribe moral status to. So if you think that animals have moral status in themselves, not just derivative moral status, why do you think that? in virtue of what about that animal gives it that. And do all animals have that? Seems like some animals are not as smart as others. Is intelligence factored into that? Or does that intelligence actually map onto something like consciousness? Other philosophers think that we should even expand the net of items considered to have moral status wider by including things like plants, ecosystems, famous works of art, or religious artifacts. This is not a claim that these things have consciousness or experience, but rather that there can be things which are in their interests, despite those things lacking desires. And note this is not saying that these things like a tree or an ecosystem has derivative moral status, that it is useful for us as humans and therefore we want to keep it around. It is saying that that plant or that ecosystem has moral status in itself. One might say that even if a painting has no desire, it is in the interest of that painting to be kept at a temperature and humidity level which preserve it. A tree might not have consciousness, but there could be an argument for the amount of sunlight that it should get or the amount of water that it should get and that those things might be in its interest. However, it seems that what we as humans might ascribe as desire to non-sentient objects is just that, a human desire, a derivative status, not a desire of those actual objects. It seems like we are mapping our desire to keep trees around as a desire that those trees actually have. While it doesn't seem that it's necessarily in their interest or not to keep existing. It also seems that since we've never found a sentient painting, we have no context for what might actually be in its interest. So the only thing we're doing is we're personifying these paintings or trees and saying, well, we as humans like to stay around as long as possible. So clearly a tree wants to stay around as long as possible. But we're just ascribing our desires to that thing. We're not actually giving a convincing argument for that thing having interests or desires or something that it wants. We don't know that it's in the interest of a tree to keep on living for a long time. It might actually be in the interest of a tree to die, decompose, and provide food for its seeds and children and offspring. Maybe it would want, a painting even, would want to naturally decompose. The only people that want to extend its life artificially are humans. And on the other end of the spectrum in terms of our reign of mortal, moral status and how far that goes, it's difficult to explain exactly why humans have moral status and animals do not without some difficulties. Requiring higher mental capacities means that newborns and the developmentally disabled might not have moral status. However, if we talk about the potential to gain higher mental capacities, it is unclear how a fertilized egg or even just enough cells with enough DNA such that a person could be cloned from them lack moral status. Because both a fertilized egg and those cells require a person to keep them alive and foster them into an actual person or being with those higher mental capacities, but it seems like we don't want to give those things necessarily moral status. There are people that might provide moral status to the egg, but it seems to me that few would consent to giving moral status to dead skin cells, because that's going to create a lot of problems for us. It doesn't seem like I need to be vacuuming up all my dead skin cells and giving them to a lab to create more humans. What do you think? What has moral, full moral status, derivative moral status, partial moral status, and no moral status? How are these lines drawn around some groups and not others? Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.